Quick announcement, uh, this Saturday I'm going to be down in LA at the Lucky Lady Casino. There's going to be a meetup game with a bunch of other vloggers. Um, so if you want to come down, hang out, play a little poker, come join us 6 p.m. on the 15th at the Lucky Lady Casino. See you there. If you can't make it to the meetup game, you can always find me on Rad Poker. Just download the app, play some uh, Turbo Heads Up. It's free. It's fun. You get to play against some of your favorite vloggers. And of course, if you get to play against me, I go under the name of Magic. So if you want to play, hop on. Let's do it. I'll see you on Rad Poker. We're back at Capital Casino. They have a really good 1-3 game. It's a $500 buy-in match the stack. And the action is always, always good. Anyway, we buy in for $500. Sit for a while before this hand comes around. There is a bunch of limpers. A player raises to 12. Another player calls to 12. And I decide to raise with ace-king from the button to 62. So $50 on top of the previous raise. It gets folded back to the player who opened or raised to 12 and he puts in the call. Everybody else folds out. We're headed heads up to a flop. He is a vlog watcher and probably knows my game fairly well. The flop comes 10, 9, 6. I'm putting him on a hand like ace, king, ace, queen, but more likely an over pair like jacks or queens. He checks to me. I decide to check it back. I'm not going to bloat this pot anymore. I'm probably behind. He's more likely to have a big pair. Turn card comes is a five of spades. At this point, he thinks for a little bit and decides on a bet of $80. Actually, this is a good bet. Uh, it's good sizing by him. He either has a hand like a big pair or possibly ace queen of spades. But anything he has is probably better than what I have unless it's specifically an ace queen of spades. I decided to play like a donkey and put in the call. The river card comes as a six of diamonds. He checks it over to me just in case I want to bluff off the rest of my money. I decline. He ends up showing a two black queens so he definitely owned us on this hand. We gave him $80 too much. That's what you get for playing like a donkey. Another player named Ken mentioned that his wife is in love with Zeus and uh, it kind of cracked the whole table up. And then uh, I looked down at ace nine offsuit and figure, hey, why don't we just play this? It's almost like a dog. It's almost like a canine, but it's a little bit better. So I raised a 15, end up getting a collar from the button and one from the big blind. So with 46 in and three players, we get to see a flop of ace queen three rainbow so for such a loose open pretty good flop first player checks i bet 25 and the button folds fairly quickly and the person in the big blind decides that 25 seems like a good amount and he puts in the call turn card is a ten of diamonds not my favorite card puts out possible straight he could have been calling me with something like queen 10 or king jack or Maybe he has jack 10 and picked up a, a pair and a straight draw. I decide to bet 60 at this point and he calls rather quickly. River card is a 10 and the player jams his last $45 in there like he couldn't wait for it to get in. I snap call because I ain't folding an ace and he shows 3-4 offsuit. Interesting. I got a little message for Ken's wife. How you doing? I put the $6 straddle on this hand. Player opens for 18 in the cutoff. The button puts in the call. I look down at two black jacks. This is going up. I raised to 97. I was trying to raise to 98, but I grabbed one too many blue chips out. Anyway, the person who raised to 18 is the same person from the previous hand, the vlog watcher when I had my ace king and he had pocket queens. He ends up putting in the call. I have him on a range of ace king, ace queen, possibly pocket queens and just putting in a call. But uh, with two jacks, I think I'm gonna be playing this aggressively on just about any flop without an ace king or queen in it. Flop is perfect, it's nine, nine, three. 
There are two spades out there. On a paired board, I would normally see bet roughly 30 to 40 percent. Since there's two spades out there, I size up just a little bit and make it $90, close to 40 percent of pot. I kind of want this to look just like a regular old C-bet. Don't want to give, give away the strength of my hand. Um, in the old days, I probably would just bet a lot larger to protect my jacks from all the overcards. But uh, now I just want to give him a price that uh, might attract him to make a bad call. I mean, I've made some donkey calls. Maybe my opponent will do so also. He thinks for quite a while and ends up folding. We talk later about the hand and, and uh, he said he had ace king and uh, that he was confused by the bet and that he was unsure whether he was making the correct play. So anytime you can have your opponents a little bit confused and off balance, it got to be a good thing. So I'd like my sizing and we take this one down. There are two early limpers. We look down at ace king offsuit and put in a raise to 20. The button puts in the call and the first limper also puts in the call. So we're going to go three ways to a flop with 64 in the pot. And the flop is, well, not ideal. It comes jack, nine, five, rainbow. So we kind of miss this flop. First person checks. I decided just to check this back. And the person on the button also puts in the check. Turn card is an ace, which is a beautiful card. And when check two, I decided to bet $40. It's about two thirds pot. Person on the button quickly puts in the fold. And now the initial limper thinks for a while. And I'm going, oh no, he's going to put in a check raise with something like a ace five or jack nine or some sort of other trappy hand. And I'm going to just fold this thing out. Well, I got part of the story right. He did put in the check raise, but he made it really small to 45. So it sucked me in there for one more card and it comes a eight of diamonds on the end. He checks it over to me. I told him I give up. I check it back and he shows ace nine offsuit. Player opens for a min raise of six. I decide to raise it with ace king on the button. Seems like we've been getting ace king quite a lot today. Anyway, it's folded around to the person who opened for six. He puts in the call. So we're going to go heads up to a flop with 44 in. And the flop is really good. King, three, king. He quickly checks. I quickly C bet for 15. And he puts in the call. Turn card is a 10 of diamonds. He checks again. I decided to bet a little bit bigger this time to 40. And he doesn't take long before calling again. So we're going to go see a river card with 154 in and it is the three of clubs. Not my favorite card. If he had a weak king, he caught up. He checked it to me. He has about a hundred little, maybe a little over a hundred left. So I start to put out a bet to get them all in and he quickly folds. We switch seats trying to get a better angle for the camera. In the big blind with pocket fours, player to my left opens for a raise to 12. You get one caller from the cutoff. And I put in the call with two fours, hoping to set mine. Flop is great. 10, four deuce. You can't ask for much better than that. I check it to the aggressor. He bets 24. He only has maybe a, another 80 or $90 left. So I decide to put in a min check raise here to 50, trying to get him to commit. He puts in the call for the 50. He has maybe 60 or $65 left behind. Turn card is a 10. I start to put out $40 and as I'm doing so, he just jams his stack in. So I put in the quick call. He turns over that he had King 10. I told him it's a setup hand and uh, we ended up taking this one down. There's a $6 straddle and uh, there were four limpers and it comes back around to me. I'm in the big blind with two nines. I decided to raise it and I made it make it 36. Looking back on this, I think that's a too small for the amount of money that's already in the pot. I should probably make this 45 or 50 if I'm going to be raising in this spot. Anyway, the person on my direct left puts in the call. He has a pretty good size stack and the next player goes all in for 40. 
$7. So it cost me another $11 to call. Of course, I'm calling. So we have one player that's all in, and we got a $159 pot and a dry side pot. Flop comes King, King, Jack. And I decided to put in a normal size C bet, maybe a little bit on the smaller side. And uh, so I bet 35. I want this to look just like if I have a hand like ace king, king queen, pocket queens, you know, any of those kind of hands. And I got the other player to fold out. So I'm free rolling on the main pot. And uh, bad run out comes with another jack on the end. I get counterfeited. The player ended up showing jack seven offsuit to win this one. Whew. Oh, well, this is the hand of the day, and it's also a donkey alert. Um, I pick up two jacks from middle position, open the raise to 15. I get two callers behind me and one from the big blind. So we're going to go four ways to a flop with 61 in. Flop is, well, interesting. It comes 10, 8, 7 rainbow. So we do have an over pair with a gut shot. I decided to check it. My thinking at the time was that this really connects with the callers behind me ranges much better than, than my range. I can only represent an overpair with this kind of flop. Maybe pocket tens. He gets to check to the person in the hijack. He puts in a bet for $45. He's a solid player. He's a little bit stuck today. So, you know, we all play a little bit looser when we're stuck. And, uh, I figured he would do this with his value hands, such as these, and also with some of his less valuable hands. So I think it's a clear call on my part. I am concerned that he might have flopped a set. I don't think he has a straight. He could have two pair with seven, eight, or just a random 10 with a kicker. Turn card comes as a king of spades. Not my favorite card. I check it. It gets checked to the person in the hijack again. My read on the hijack at the time was that he's a good enough player to put me in a tough spot. I thought he might have it and I thought he would definitely bluff at it if he didn't. I think I'm ahead of about half his value hands. As you can see he would be betting with hands like ace 10 suited, queen 10 suited, 9 10 suited, and 9 8 suited. All the other ones are basically out of his range. So half of them have me crushed. The other half I'm still ahead of. And uh, I don't know. I just thought he was just out of line. So I put in the quick call. I didn't realize that he had another stack behind. This hand should be folded. His range is so much stronger than mine. That's why I checked the flop. And here I am continuing on this turn card. What a donkey. How many times do I have to tell you? You have to ask for a count. You don't just snap call someone when you're not even sure how big the bet is. Needless to say, when I saw he had another $100 behind, I said, wow, that was really stupid. I, I was putting in a loose call for a hand, you know, where I thought it was going to be like $130, $150 max. And now I'm putting almost $240 in there, and I do not like my situation at all. The player behind me in, this, in the tank finally decides to go for a fold, and we see a river card of a nine of clubs. Oh my God. The villain turns over, pocket sevens. I show my jacks, play this thing horrible, and I won the pot. Player's name is TJ. I told him hey, that he played the hand perfectly and that if I wasn't such a donkey that he would have easily won it. I also mentioned that I thought he had a smaller amount on his all-in jam and that if I knew it was bigger, I probably wouldn't have called. So. Two donkey mistakes and I get rewarded for it. I decided to call a day shortly after that hand. I wasn't playing well. I wasn't reading players well. I was making stupid calls and stupid mistakes. And it was getting pretty hot outside in the tent. So I figured it was a good time to pack it up. Thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate your support. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. It does help out the channel. And don't forget, if you're in the L.A. area, I'm going to be down there next weekend playing at the Lucky Lady on Saturday night from 6 p.m. on for the uh, Vlogger Meetup game. If you have a chance, come in, say hello. 
If you want to take some of my dough, you can do that too. I'm playing like a donkey. Come get it. <laughs>